On today's episode of What's Going On with Shipping, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers have released an updated salvage plan. I'm your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to today's episode. So I am just back. It's April 11, 2024, just back from Washington, D.C., from the Navy League's Air, uh, Sea Air Space Expo. It was a huge event. I can't wait to share some of the information from it with you. Uh, I want to talk about the panel I hosted, which talked about new approaches to maritime security. I want to give you my top five issues that I think are really important, but that's going to be in a later video. I also got a great video in the can ready for you on a reaction to Peter Zihan's latest video about the bridge in Baltimore and the Jones Act of all things. So get ready for Better Call Sal video. But today I want to deal with the video put out by the Army Corps of Engineers in Baltimore talking about their salvage plan because I think there's a little misconception in their video that I want to clarify. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, this is the image that you're very used to seeing. This is the collapsed bridge, but I want to take a moment and go in some detail here and, and discuss some of the things that you're seeing. So obviously motor vessel Dolly is impaled up here. You can't see it, but there is a pillar right back here that she is on top of. So she is on the pillar back here. She was heading outbound. So she has this collapsed section of the bridge on top of her plus there's a section of the of the bridge itself laying across the bow and then off on the other side this right here is the other pillar this is the northern pillar so this is the main shipping channel and one of the things we're going to be talking about is the effort to clear this section you can see where this uh tug and bar excuse me where this crane barge is this the effort to clear this section here above it here this is the northern area this is the northern span of the bridge this is outside the navigable channel and then over here to the south is the rest of the channel but the focus is really right here it's the dolly it's the section just above here on the northern side of the channel and then once the dolly is removed clearing that southern end of the main channel this is a better view of the whole area right here uh, again, Dolly, this is the pillar she's up. Here's the other pillar. The main channel runs right here. This is the Fort McHenry channel. When Dolly left, she came off the berth up here. She was assisted out by the tugs. She circles around, comes into the Fort McHenry channel, and then makes her run heading toward the center span of the, of the bridge, which we know didn't happen. The issue here is removing this section of the bridge. This is the priority right now because removing this section of the bridge will allow for for a limited channel to be opened. And what we're talking about is removing the trestle area. You can see the bridge. So this bridge had the steel and concrete bridge going across, but it had the trestle, the, the kind of metal triangular part above it. That is standing up. That is what's blocking the channel right now. Below it at the bottom, sitting on 50 foot bottom is the rest of the bridge. But what the army is talking about is a phase plan to remove parts of this bridge. So this is the underwater sonar image that you're getting. This is looking at the southern pillar here. So Dolly would be all the way up here, up against this side. Uh, this is the bridge coming down off the Dolly here, hitting the bottom. You can see the wreckage here all along the bottom. And then you see the trestle uh, construction here. So what the Army is focusing on right now is removing all these steel trestle sections. To do that, they have to cut them into pieces that can be lifted with the cranes on scene, either the Chesapeake 1000, the Weeks 533, or any of the other cranes they have. But they have to cut them into bite-sized pieces from which they can remove them. The the goal is going to be removing this section of the bridge right here first because if they can remove that that will open up part of the federal channel you'll see right here it says limited access channel this is what they're trying to do so here is uh, marine traffic's view of it here is Dolly. Here it is up against the bridge. The area we're talking about is right here. This is the that northern span. So there's a section of the bridge that's down off the starboard side of Dolly, and then there's a big section off the port side of Dolly. And then there's an area here where the pivot on this section fell and there's another piece of bridge right here between where brian nichols megan ann are this is the section they're working on this section right here the this kind of northern section of the channel is what they want to clear 
Now, the reason they're focusing on the northern section is Dolly is severely damaged. I don't think this has been conveyed enough, but Dolly has taken a severe damage. I mean, the bow section is missing an entire section here that has been literally carved out of it. You can see where the name is. This entire section right here is completely gone. And that has compromised the bow, not to mention the fact that there is 4,000 tons of bridge on top of her. Notice here, you see part of the red boots, uh, boot topping here, but you don't see it up here. That's because the bow is being pushed down into the mud. If you look at her stern, her stern is up high. And that's an indication that the force is being pushed down on the bow. She is resting on the bottom up against the pillar here and right below the mud is a gas pipeline so they can't just drag her out they can't just drag her out and bring the bridge with her for fear that's going to rip the bow off this section right here and cause even more damage to the dolly they have got to remove all of this and this is going to take a long time this is this is weeks if not months to really clear this section of the channel out all right, so this is a one-minute video put out by the Army Corps of Engineers in Baltimore. I want to play it for you, but I, I want to comment on it because I do think there's some issues here that are not 100% accurate. The Key Bridge Response Salvage Operations Plan is complex and highly technical with many challenges above and below the surface of the water, but it can be understood in three concurrent priorities. First, we must clear wreckage like steel and concrete from the 700-foot navigation channel, and as part of that effort, clear a 280 foot limited access channel within its span. Okay, so that's exactly what we just conveyed. So here's Dolly up on the southern side. Here's the northern pillar with the debris here, but they're focusing on removing the section of the bridge with uh, the trusses here. And that's gonna get you a 35 foot depth of channel along with 280 feet wide. So that's the goal. The federal channel normally is 700 feet wide and 50 feet deep. At a depth of 35 feet, this will allow three major car carriers one-way traffic in and out of the harbor. Okay, one of the things I think they get wrong here is you see that all of a sudden the debris here is removed. I don't think that's being removed. This is the remnants of the roadway section of the bridge. This is the concrete and steel that you drove over if you've ever been over the key bridge. That's still going to be here. What they're just removing here is the trestle section. That's what they're going to focus on. They're going to remove the trestle section of that, and that's going to allow you to bring in the car carriers. Now, remember, there's several major type vessels that come in and out of Baltimore. There are car carriers. Uh, they handle about 60 to 70,000 uh, cars in and out of Baltimore monthly. Also, we're talking about not just cars, but trucks and uh, farm equipment come out. And while you can send those cars to other ports, a lot of it has to come in and out of Baltimore anyway. So you're going to have to either rail or truck a lot of those vehicles back up into Baltimore. So car carriers are number one, but the car, the other elements you're not gonna be able to get in here are the bulk carriers. These are the coal carriers. These are gonna be the sugar and salt importers. They need that 50 foot draft. One of the th reasons Baltimore had such a deep channel coming into it, even before the new container ships came into action after the new lane opened in the Panama Canal in 2016 is because it loaded these heavy car, uh, these, these coal carriers. So they gotta get down the 50 feet. But that section of the bridge is still going to be here. I don't think in the span of just two, two and a half weeks left, they're going to be able to remove all that section that's going to be down from 35 to 50 foot depth. I think the remnants of the bridge are going to be there, and they're going to basically sail car carriers over the top of it. The other reason, uh, type of ship you're not going to be able to bring in is container ships, because a lot of the container ships are more than 35 foot draft. You may be able to bring in some smaller ones, but not the big vessels like Dolly that draw over 40 feet of water. So. I think this image here is is incorrect. There's still going to be remnants here. And what they would do is as they start bringing car carriers in, when the car carriers aren't coming in, they'll work in clearing the section and getting the draft down deeper so that eventually the limited access channel will get wider and deeper so that conceivably they'll start be able to bring in those deeper draft bulk carriers and container ships. While this is taking place, we must work to refloat the container ship Dolly and move it away from the Federal Navigation Channel. 
I think that's a key issue here. Refloat. The ship is a ground up forward. It is up against the pillar and it has suffered flooding of the two forward compartments, probably the forepeak and the bow thruster room. Uh, and that vessel is now in the process of offloading roughly a little less than 200 containers from it. They're trying to get weight off the bow, but they also need to clear work area so they can work on cutting and lifting sections of the bridge off the bow. So right now what you're seeing is a container uh, program to remove containers. Unfortunately, Baltimore has experience of this from the Everford from two years ago. Once the dolly is out of the channel, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and its partners in the Unified Command will continue to clear the remaining wreckage, ensuring the 50-foot deep Federal Navigation Channel opens back up to two-way vessel traffic. So you will see one-way traffic deep before you see the two-way traffic. They're talking about on their timeline, the end of April, being able to bring those 35-foot draft vessels through the limited access channel. That's very optimistic. Uh, it depends on whether or not they get the weather to do that. Then they're talking about bringing deep draft channels, in, uh, deep draft vessels in by the end of May, but the complete channel clearing is going to be after May. It's going to take longer than that, and all of that is absolutely dependent on weather and abysmal diving conditions in and around the port. It is black water diving. You can't see, and you're limited uh, in removing wreckage by the size of the cranes you have. We are committed to undertaking this work with care and precision as we restore full service to a port that is so vital to our nation. So remember at Port of Baltimore, uh, about 3% of imports and exports coming out. So this is the removal of containers right now off the, the forward section of the dolly. They want to lighten the vessel up. Uh, most of the containers that are up on the bow tend to be empty. You'll see some images of multiple containers being lifted. That's because they're empty. But remember, even an empty container weighs several tons. There, there are many uh, reporters giving uh, 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 bad information out there. You can't remove these by helicopter. I know some people talk about that. These containers are absolutely much too heavy to be used by most helicopters. Uh, even empty 40-foot containers uh, would max out many helicopters, let alone fully loaded. Plus, these containers are damaged. Uh, the cargo has shifted around in them. Uh, they're not stable loads. Uh, and then what you're seeing is the removing the mo movement of some of those trusses. And again, you're seeing them cut into these sections where they can be cut and lifted off. The size of the sections are really dependent on the availability of the cranes that are there. And if you can only cut a section that can be lifted off, they're being put on barges and sent over to the old Starrow, uh, Sparrows Point. So the other news that came out was the head of the NTSB was up for her reconfirmation hearing. And so uh, she was up on the Hill, gave testimony. She was asked about the port of Baltimore and the investigation into the motor vessel Dolly. She said that a preliminary report will be issued in early May is what we're looking at for the first preliminary report. They have questioned all the crew members, the pilots. They've retrieved data, not just from the vessel data recorder, but from the ship's uh, systems. Let me be clear about a couple of issues that are out there right now. Number one, ship's crew is on board. This is an operating vessel. The, the power is up on the vessel. There are refrigerated containers on the vessel. You need a ship's crew while this crew is still operational. Plus, they may need the uh, propeller from this vessel to help back it off when they eventually salvage it. Plus, they need to stabilize the vessel. So there's going to be a crew remaining on it. The ship was set for a 35-day sail over to Sri Lanka. So there's food, water on board. They can get relief. The crew is not going ashore. There's no shore leave. They are remaining on board the vessel. Uh, issues about hacking this vessel, there is a lively debate going on about this. Understand what caused this accident was a power failure on the vessel. Power failures happen on vessels. Talk to anyone who's ever sailed before, they'll tell you about power failures on a vessel. What makes this power failure different is that the ship lost its generators, which in turn forced it to lose the main engine. You can't run the main engine on a ship without the generators. And what makes this even more unique is that the emergency generator did not come on in time. It's supposed to ignite after 45 seconds. That engine did not fire up until, well, power did not come on until 58 seconds later. 
And again, I recommend you heading over to Chief McCoy's channel, over to Steam Man's channel. Go look at what they have posted. I have linked them into my videos. You can go see them and get some good issues about it. Lots of issues about, is this cyber attack? Is this a cyber hack? Can you cyber hack a vessel? Yes, you can hack into a vessel. The problem is most of the ship's controls are air gap. There's no way to bridge into them. You can get into the ship's computer system and, 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 get load plans and email and probably a lot of other things you don't want from sailors on their computers. I, I won't go into detail, but it's very unlikely that this was a cyber attack. Now, does that mean it needs to be ruled out? No, we look at everything. That's what the NTSB should be doing. I have a whole slew of questions. I hope the NTSB was asking this crew. I hope they were pulling information. Oh, no data on the VDR. Let me be clear about something. A vessel data recorder sucks, sucks. It's awful. It's terrible. All it does is it records data from the microphones in the bridge and from systems that are programmed to feed into it. The VDR has its own battery system. So it was recording the entire time this accident was happening. The problem was when the ship lost power, all the instruments that feed into it lost power. They weren't working. And when they stop working, there's no data to be sent to the VDR. The VDR was recording. There's no two minutes of missing tape. This is not Watergate. There, there's, there's audio recording the entire time. It's just there's no information being fed into it. So when I had the first blackout, there's a gap of information. When the power comes on, systems have to reboot up, come back up, start feeding data, and then they lost power again. The ship has power now. We know that. It's got smoke coming from the stack. Uh, the radars are spinning. So the ship had power. So they know what caused the power outage because they obviously fixed what caused the power outage. There are issues about fuel with the APL Qingdao coming out of Howland Hook in Staten Island. Just did a video on that. Uh, we don't know if they're related or not. We don't. But what we do know is there are issues that causes ships to lose power. And the question is, what was the cause for this? We've had a lot of issues recently in the United States. We had the Golden Ray uh, not taking ballast coming out of Brunswick, Georgia that rolled on its side and nearly closed the port of Brunswick. Uh, we had Maersk uh, uh, Sarabaya coming into Savannah, lose steering and nearly close the channel into Savannah. We had Everforward leaving Baltimore two years ago due to pilot error, missed the channel and run aground. So we've had close calls, but this instance is a, should be a warning to all of us that Shipping is very precarious. We ship things at a high volume and a high velocity. And when accidents happen, they happen fast, they happen quickly, and there's very little you can do to prevent it. There should be a study being done right now across all the ports in the United States to look for infrastructure vulnerabilities. Understand the way we run ports in the United States is terrible. Everything is factionalized. The waters are controlled by the U.S. Coast Guard and the Army Corps of Engineers. The ports are run by state and municipal governments. There are private terminals that con contract to bring cranes and facilities in. There's no one who's looking at the entire issue of ports, channels, bridges, infrastructure, ships. This should be, there should be a, an area within the Department of Transportation under the Maritime Administration that does nothing but look at U.S. ports and basically examine their vulnerabilities and highlight issues like this and raise concerns about poor bridges, poor infrastructure. Uh, this channel has got to be cleared so that we can get ship and traffic going back in. Let's not forget those port workers in Baltimore are sitting there waiting for ships to come in and they can't get cargo in. These are the same port workers, by the way, who showed up every day during COVID and made sure that your stocks were, you know, your shelves were stocked and goods were coming in all the time without a problem. And now they're being kept out. And the fear the port of Baltimore has is that even when the port opens back up, business may leave this port. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social, uh, share it across social media. And if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly yearly subscriber to my channel. You all allow me to do this. Support me on going up to uh, uh, Washington, D.C. and hosting a panel at the Sea Air Space Expo, for example. Until the next episode, this is Sal, signing off.